Uh, so welcome back today we are with a new topic that is uh, a very important one in the first module that is magnetic circuit calculations and there we primarily calculate the mmf what is mmf mmf we know it's very important that is the ampere turns so how much is the mmf required for a machine how much is the at ampere turns required okay so this magnetic circuit is a very important part of any machine okay so when we uh, this mmf is the prime motive force for generation of flux just like emf is a motivational force behind generation of current mmf, MMF is required to generate or circulate flux through the magnetic circuit so how much mmf is required uh, to to circulate the required flux or to maintain the required flux density in the different parts of the machine okay that should be calculated okay so MMF has so many, uh, so like just like EMF, yes, there, there can be several sources. If the sources are in series, you have to add it up and you'll get the total source. Likewise, MMF will have to, uh, more than more than one part or two, 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 three parts. All those uh, uh, MMFs will be uh, in if they are in series, they will be added up so that we'll get the total MMF required. Okay, so we will concentrate. Okay, so ampere turns required in turns is actually related to the winding okay so th that is how you fix the number of turns and windings of the machine okay so while designing the magnetic circuit or while designing the ampere turns you are indeed designing the winding and, and indeed the electrical circuit so that is how electrical circuit is very much related to magnetic circuit okay so first we will we'll first in the, in the in the few lectures that follow we'll see uh, two MMF calculations that is MMF required for air gap and then this the MMF pass through the air gap and then they get attached to the teeth and what is the MMF required at the teeth so ATG that is the MMF for the air gap and ATT that is the MMF for the teeth these are the two things we will calculate okay and uh, calculations are not that simple but but we but certain with, with certain valid approximations we can actually calculate it easy easily uh, these values okay so these are the literals that is l is the length of the core this is one of the main dimensions of any machine length of the core and then uh, lg length of air gap okay between stator and rotor you have the air gap that length is lg and that is slot pitch why is slot pitch i'll show this pictorically what is slot pitch and this is width of slot ws wt is width of uh, tooth and wo that is slot opening that is you have when you have a slot you have teeth also so many a times <clears throat> the teeth is tapered so if the teeth is tapered the opening the, the the width of the slot is not uniform right from the opening towards the bottom that is when the teeth is tapered the opening width is not equal to the width that follows downwards when it come when, when we come down to the bottom of the slot okay and that is how this wo come into uh, existence that is wo that is slot opening okay then you you have radial ducts i'll show that pictorically also number of radial ducts is nd and then wd the width of each such duct okay now we'll we'll move on to uh, we will move on to the uh, the next one that is uh, so bh curve is very important uh, that is how the bh curve that is at is nothing but h so h is nothing but uh, at at the, that that capital a capital t by l is nothing but uh small at uh, so ampere turns total ampere turns divided by length is small at that small at if, if it is plotted against b many times manufacturers will be specific will be uh, giving this bat curves for or bh curves for various materials this is for that for an iron specimen okay so if if we if we get the value for if you get the value for at small at at any point if i get this value if i get this value of at looking at this graph then i can get what is the value of corresponding value of flux density at that particular point so maintaining of that flux density is of prime importance that is why we have to uh, generate that maintain the mmf the required mmf mmf is required to maintain the required flux density at a point okay and saturation is also very important because if if if, if you generate more uh, flux what happens that portion will become saturated so non-linearity will creep in you are actually moving into losses so saturation to an extent should be avoided but saturation cannot be avoided beyond a, a point okay so at 
80 calculations are required to just know what is the flux density at a given point of a machine. Some sort of flux density should be maintained at the top of the teeth. So how can you know that? You have to know the ampere turns at the top of the teeth. If you know that value, then it easily then it is from the graph or the from the graph of the specimen, then you can easily get the value of flux density at that point. And that is how this is working. Okay. Now we will be uh, moving to the <clears throat> Okay, this is what I am talking about. See, a length of air gap is not uniform. Okay, that is, I told that air, a length of air gap is a space between the stator and rotor. Okay, but that is not uniform. Why it is not uniform? That is, rotor is slotted and the stator is also slotted. So, this gap is completely as this, uh, so this gap is not at all uniform. Okay, that is, since the two surfaces that is stator surface and rotor surface is not, not smooth as they are slotted the length of the gap is not there is air gap but the air gap is not uniform but the first figure figure 4.5 it is showing that an ideal case where we have we assume that the surface of the rotor as well as the surface of the stator is uniform in that case the length of air gap is uniform everywhere ld is same everywhere okay now i discuss what is slot slot pitch what is slot pitch that is these are the two different slots. This is one slot and this is another slot. This is a teeth I, I, a tooth I am talking about. So this is a totally enclosed slot. That is why we get a uh, smooth surface over here. Okay. So what is slot pitch? The distance between the centers of two adjacent slots is nothing but the slot pitch. Distance between the centers of two adjacent slots is nothing but slot pitch Ys. Okay. Now, so we assume that uh that, that this the, this is not uh, smooth and ultimately this is not smooth so we have we we uh, this is uh, more or more more close to the reality that is uh, this is the rotor surface which is very slotted okay so this is the flux coming the the the, the field lines coming but you can see that the air gap here it is this much length this is here it is this much length so air gap is not at all uniform okay so what happens is that Flux always try to pass through the easiest path or we'll select or they will select the low reluctance path. Okay. In that case, this is the low reluctance path because this here is iron path. Here, if you if you want to pass, air is air is so much in between. So what happens? The reluctance of this path will be very high. So maximum flux will be confined to the teeth area or the teeth length or the teeth width, width of the teeth. Okay. In that case, even though we consider one slot pitch. All our discussions hereafter will be confined to one slot pitch. If we calculate uh, everything with M, if we calculate the air gap required across one slot pitch, then that is valid for other slot pitches also. Okay, so a entire calculation is confined to one slot pitch. So, at in this figure, the complete slot pitch is 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 passing flux. But here you can see that that is not the case. That is, since the reluctance path is low. For the teeth width or the tooth width, the flux is confined to that width only. Okay, but is that a reality? That's another question. Okay, so what is the reluctance? Reluctance equation we know that length by mu naught a. So what is the length? Length here it is air gap Lg divided by mu naught. Since it's an air gap, mu naught itself. Then what is area? Area is nothing but the length of the material. The length of the material uh, multiplied by the slot pitch. Okay. So, for this case, this is valid. This calculation is valid. That is, reluctance of the air gap is nothing but Lg divided by mu naught L into Ys. Okay. But here it is slightly different. We will see that. But here you see that the slot pitch is not Ys in the second case. In, in the case of figure 4.6, the slot pitch initially it was Ys. Now, here the slot pitch effectively reduces to this much. And that effective slot pitch is nothing but Ys prime or Ys dash. So what is Ys dash? Ys dash is nothing but the width of the teeth. Ys dash is nothing but the width of the teeth. So this is my width of the teeth. The flux is confined only to the width of the tooth. So that much is my effective slot pitch and that is Ys dash. So Ys dash is equal to Wt. So Wt is equal to Ys minus width of the slot. That is the end air ys minus the width of the slot here we have half slot half slot so half slot plus half slot is nothing but ws so ys minus ws we get it as wt 
So ys prime is nothing but nothing but ys minus ws. So what is the reluctance in the case of the second case? For figure 4.6, what is the reluctance? Lg is the same, mu naught is the same. Instead of ys, we have ys prime and length of the core remains the same. So what is ys? Ys is nothing but ys, ys dash is nothing but ys minus ws, ys minus ws. Now, now we have taken this case of 4.6 that we are assuming that the entire flux is confined to the width of the tooth. Nothing is going towards the air gap. Okay. We know that air is also a good conductor for electricity. So, uh, so sorry, a uh, good conductor for magnetic flux. Sorry, uh, magnetic flux, if air is a good conductor. So, what happens? The flux will not confine to the width of the tooth. Rather, there will be some fringing. This is called fringing. This was the initial case of 4.6. Now, some of the flux will complete its path through the air gap. So, there will be fringing of flux around the around the edges of the tooth or, or this is called the completion of the flux through the air gap. Okay. So, this is called fringing of flux. That is case. That is the case here. That is 4.7. So, how do you calculate ys prime? Again, you can see that ys is not ys dash. Okay. Earlier, we have seen ys, ys dash as uh, ys minus wt but here it is ys dash but that ys this ys dash and the ys dash that we have discussed in 4.6 is totally different okay so how can you 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 have to make certain assumptions to include this fringing of flux also so what what is the solution this is a solution that is that is for some portion of the teeth for some portion of the slot you assume uniform distribution of flux this much uniform distribution this much uniform distribution. So, this much uniform distribution and this much uniform distribution will account for this fringing as well as this fringing. Okay. So, that what is that? That is now ys dash is nothing but the width of the tooth plus a delta ws. That is some portion plus some portion of the ws. That is now it is not only confined to the width of the tooth but, but it extends to some portion of the slot also that is nothing but delta of ws and uh, that is how we account for fringing okay so figure 4.8 is nothing but more or less a practical case where we have ys dash as wt plus delta ws now again ws is here wt plus w uh, delta w uh, uh, s that is i uh, from for this equation i add and subtract ws here so plus ws minus ws i bring there is no difference in the equation so what i'll do with the is that i'll take ws common for for that i'll get it as what is wt plus ws wt plus ws nothing but that is wt plus ws is nothing but the slot pitch so this is slot pitch uh, minus uh, if i take ws common that is 1 minus delta okay so this 1 minus delta i i give a new constant called Carter's gap coefficient. What is KCS? KCS is nothing but 1 minus delta and that is called Carter's gap coefficient. So, the effective slot pitch ys dash is nothing but ys minus Carter's gap, gap coefficient multiplied by ws. Okay. Now, now KCS can be calculated using uh, two empirical relation, empirical equations, empirical formula, empirical equations, you know, that's it. They, they are some cooked up uh, relations. They are, they don't have any experimental uh, foundations or validation. They are simply a cooked up equation that is called an empirical relation. Okay. So using these two empirical relations, you can get the value for KCS and these two equations you have to remember, but many a times these equations will be given in the, uh, given in the question paper itself. So. Uh, here L is L is already discussed. W S is already dis discussed. Here, what is Y? Y is nothing but width width of the slot W S divided by two times length of air gap. Okay, so this is what is the initial stage of the discussion of magnetic uh, calculations. I will discuss the remaining portion in the next video. Thank you.